Welcome to Financial Focus, brought to you by Gulf Coast Financial Services founder and CEO, John Kirkendall. John and his team of financial, legal, and tax professionals have provided North Florida savers and investors sound, comprehensive financial guidance for over 25 years, helping you to achieve important life and planning goals. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, and tune in for more Financial Focus by visiting gulfcoastfinancial.net. And welcome into the program. This is Financial Focus brought to you by the best of the best in financial services, seven years and running as named by the readers of the Lake City Reporter. They are the team from Gulf Coast Financial Services and sister company, Gulf Coast Tax Advantage. Founder and CEO, always guiding the way, John Kirkendall here with us bringing us a common sense approach to handling our money and our finances, helping to uncomplicate the financial world and helping to structure for a more confident retirement. I think those are some of the goals there at Gulf Coast Financial Services, John. Well, that's right, Peter. We really specialize in retirement planning in addition to financial planning, but I really like to focus on retirement planning. I know that, you know, when being my age, I've made a lot of mistakes that nobody told me about. And so I've had to learn the hard way. And so I just really like talking to people. Do you know that uh, 49% of the people aren't really comfortable. The boomers that were talked to aren't comfortable with making a social security decision and 69% think that if they take it early, it's automatically going to bump up when they reach full retirement age. I mean, I, I just can't believe the lack of education on retiring. Uh, and that's what we're here for is to help everybody understand more about retirement planning. We won't want to set those things straight. And, and don't worry, you're not alone there, John. We've all got a list of things we had to learn the hard way. So, But Social Security, that, that doesn't need to be one of them. And the, no. the difference in an informed and educated decision versus just a knee-jerk reaction and rushing out to claim it without any forethought can literally make a swing in hundreds of thousands of dollars in additional income over retirement. So that alone is a very important factor and therefore one of the steps I know you spend a lot of time educating your clients about when they come in for their initial planning design and review. Well, that's right, Peter. One of the things that we really work with is social security maximization and making sure that everybody understands all of the options. There are, I think, 2,500, 2,700 rules with social security. Uh, and so nobody can understand all of them. And so what we want to do is we use the software package to show you where you are, what you're going to get. It's such a big part of our retirement that we really need to make the best choice. In some cases, for some people, it's all the retirement income they'll have. And so they need to make the best decision. Now, if we can live within our means and that's all we need, that's one thing. But if it's all we have, that may be a different story and necessitate some some really, really yeah. hard, hard conversations and realities. But, John, I think that for anyone today, regardless of if they've not saved a whole, whole lot or saved with abundance – there still are questions, there still are complications, mm -hmm. there's still a lot of concern over what we're seeing and hearing in the financial world and how it will impact us into and throughout retirement. And so you've created this list, this report, this resource of the 10 steps to prepare for retirement. Mm -hmm. And really, I think that if anybody goes through this list and knocks out each one of the items on this list, that it will help to provide a lot of clarity and confidence even in an uncertain world. Well, that's right, Peter. And in going over the list and, and putting it together, this is really what we use when we're going through our financial planning process for retirement. So it's really what we need to take care of. Well, if you would like to get a copy of this list, all you need to do is pick up the phone, give a call. They will make it available to you there at Gulf Coast Financial Services, 386-755-9018, 386-755-9018. Even if you are already a client of John's and the team from Gulf Coast Financial Services, uh, just an additional benefit as, as being part of the family is to get this list so that you can go through it on your own time and reassure yourself that you've addressed the 10 items on this list or even 
hand it to a family member, a, a child, a parent that may be thinking about retiring or already retired, and you want to help them make sure they're in great shape, a coworker that's been mentioning retirement, they would appreciate you giving them this valuable resource of the 10 steps to prepare for retirement. And again, if you want to get a copy, all you need to do is reach out and give a call, 386-755-9018. 386-755-9018. John, the first few of the items on this list deal with something that we've talked about a lot, and that is the construction of the retirement income plan. Now, on this list, you break that down step by step. It's really kind of the first four to five steps in this process. I guess that's how important they are. Well, it's very important, Peter, because without, as we talked before, without a roadmap, we don't know where we're going. And without knowing exactly how much we're going to be spending or needing in retirement, we don't know how much to budget for. So one of the first things we talk about is define your budget. And the thing I like about this item is it tells you that you work up a budget, but then you go back and look at how much you spent the prior year and compare that with your budget to really come up with a good income. Because when we look at a budget and we're projecting how much we're gonna need, there's a, there's a large possibility that we're gonna overlook some items such as taxes, some of the medical costs, some of the things that we're spending money on that we don't really think about or that we didn't put enough money in clothes, food, et cetera. So this will really give you a really good idea of how much you're going to need in retirement. And then the second one is to find your guaranteed income. And when we're talking about guaranteed income, we're talking about things that you know that every month, as long as you live, you're going to get a check that's going to be dependable and it's going to come in the same amount uh, every month so that we can figure out how much we have to supplement or what your income gap is, which is the next one. And the income gap is the amount of money that I need to make up from that guaranteed bucket. So if my guaranteed income is 2000 and I need 4000 then I'm going to need to take 2000 each month out of my, uh, my investments in order to come up with with my in total income, and that is your income gap. Your income gap is two thousand dollars. So that's the amount of money each month that mm -hmm. your portfolio is going to be responsible for generating for you. And we also need to factor in some some other issues there, and we'll go through a few of those in the rest of this list. But defining that budget, John, can we call it a spending plan? Budgeting seems limiting to me, and and spending yeah. plan it gives me guidance, but it allows me to to go in the fast lane lane if I want or the, the slow lane if I want, but it keeps me between the guardrails and heading in the right direction, but just doesn't seem quite as limiting as, as the budget. I don't know. Maybe it's just well, a mental, mental thing. I guess the I guess the budget was the 70s and the spending plan is the 2000s. All right. All right. Either way, <laughs> it's semantics, but uh, I just, I like it better. So defining, <laughs> defining the budget or the spending plan, defining the mm -hmm. sources of guaranteed income, this would be like pensions, social security, those things that we don't have to generate from our our personal assets, defining the income gap, how much extra we're going to need mm -hmm. our personal assets. And we, of course, want to minimize that income gap. So here's what we kind of first started the show with coming full circle is the education on social security. The more we can get from social security, the less strain and stress and reliance we'll be placing on our own personal assets and, and we'll minimize that income gap. That's right, Peter. That's, that's certainly right. And, and that's the reason that we need to make the best decision we can for Social Security. But also, in doing this, Peter, we'll know how much money we have to take out of our investments and how long those investments should last us at a reasonable rate of return and with a reasonable withdrawal rate. And in a lot of cases, we have to say, wait, that's not going to work. There are other things that we need to do. You need to work longer. We need to come up with different ways to make that budget, that income gap smaller. Well, and then once you know what you need to do, then you define how it can be done mm -hmm. and accomplished. And that is what you have continued to emphasize as being maybe the most important thing for confidence in lifestyle transitioning into and making it through retirement that unfortunately you're just not seeing done a great deal in the larger financial world. And that is formulating the specific written retirement income plan. 
Well, that's right, Peter. The, an income plan is something that we really think is important. Now, a lot of people do an investment plan, which is talking about the looking at the assets and figuring out how I'm going to maximize them. But it don't they don't really take into consideration the income plan. And the financial focus income plan is going to tell us how long my money is going to last and where I'm going to run out of money. And then what we try to do is formulate a way to make that uh, as we like to say, take the red out of the plan so that we can have the kind of retirement that we want during our retirement years. There's nothing worse than being in the early years of retirement and not uh, being able to do the things you want to do. And as we've talked about on the show, you know, we don't want to be so stingy in the early years that we don't live a life. And then later on, we end up saying, you know, I don't spend as much now, but I wish I'd have gone when I could have gone. And as I get older, I'm understanding that. I think Tom Hagler's thing about go-go years, slow go and no go uh, during retirement are, are right on. I mean, I've, I, I, I get it. Hagner had it right on when he said there are three types of three stages of retirement. There's this the go-go where we go all the time, the slow go where we still go, but we don't go as often, and the no-go. And as I'm edging into retirement, going through retirement, I understand exactly what he's talking about. I understand now why my dad wanted to stay home in the late stages of his life. I thought he was crazy, but he it's just, just the way life is. So we want to make sure that we enjoy ourselves while we can. And as I say, you know, if the good Lord has given you the health to do the things that you need and want to do, then do them. And then later in life, as we don't spend as much, we can cut down on the spending plan. So John, hypothetically, you've had a client that has been a client for five or 10 years or so. You you went through these steps with them to help them define that retirement mm -hmm. income plan. Once it's done, it's not like you never look at it again. This is something that on an ongoing basis needs to be reviewed because our conditions change, our needs mm -hmm. change, the world around us changes. So this is something that you are are helping clients review on on a regular basis and updating. Well, in this day and age, um, we really have to, Peter, because tax laws are changing, estate laws are changing. I mean, the whole structure of what we're trying to do is changing. And if we don't keep this document up, then we're just going to be further and further behind. As Brent likes to say, my son, this is a living, breathing uh, document, and it needs to be updated every year or every time there's a change in something important. Well, again, if you would like this list or if you would like the help of an experienced team of qualified professionals to actually address each item on this list, all you need to do is pick up the phone and give a call. Uh, John and his team are happy to send out the list of the 10 steps to prepare for retirement to you. They can email it to you. You can download it. You can They can send it out by mail. You can go over it on your own time. Or if you, again, would like to enlist the help of a team of experienced, qualified professionals, they offer the opportunity to go through each item and address each item with you in that financial focused planning process. All you need to do is pick up the phone, give a call 386-755-9018, 386-755-9018. Number six on the list, John, understand your risk exposure. Now, we're worried about an awful lot of different varying risks these days. But on its core level, when we say risk with our money, a lot of times we sort of default to a thinking of the market and, and what is the stock market going to do? And a lot of us are overexposed to even that level of risk. Yeah, I mean, that's right. There, there are a lot of different risks that we talk about, longevity risk, inflation risk. But the market, that certainly our portfolio risk or our investment risk is one that we really need to look at. And, you know, it's the number I always say that people can sleep with. So your portfolio, you don't want your portfolio any riskier than what you can live with day to day. But at the same time, we have to be invested so that we can make money to keep up with inflation which is certainly a killer these days because everything costs more. And after the pandemic, things are costing even more because of lack of employees, lack of supplies. I mean, every time you go to the store, there's less and less on the shelf. So we're, we're facing a lot of different risk right now, uh, but portfolio risk is just one of them. But if we need 
to invest our money. We don't want to invest our money anymore than we can sleep at night and not make knee jerk reactions to the market. As you know, Peter, the market's going to go up and down. Uh, but historically, over time, it usually goes up. There's just all these little gyrations in the meantime. And so we have to be comfortable enough to live with them. And we often overreact to those small gyrations mm-hmm. along the way and end up making mistakes, buying when we shouldn't, selling when we shouldn't, and ending up not making the profits long term that we should. The market does move up over time, but it's not mm-hmm. guaranteed to move up every single day. With the um, money that we choose to expose to the risk of the market, we should have a plan to allow it to remain invested in, in a long-term yeah. time horizon, but that's not every dollar that we have either. No, there, there's no. some money that we shouldn't expose to that risk. Another form of risk that we need to understand, John, uh, legislative risk goes into this next one, calculate your taxes. Now, mm-hmm. I know that specifically you and your team there at Gulf Coast Financial Services and sister company Gulf Coast Tax Advantage, you have a unique perspective in being able to provide both financial and tax guidance, helping to have your clients and savers and investors in North Central Florida really have a proactive approach to minimizing that tax liability. Well, that's right, Peter. We like to, uh, we, we have a software package that we can run your, your taxes through it. We can tell you what tax bracket you're in and tell you when you're going to hit the next tax bracket. So we like to really look at that. And if you're going to make a decision or make a move, we like to see how it's going to impact you tax wise. We're also, you know, very aware of the new tax proposals and all the things that are coming out constantly changing. And so we want to make sure that our clients are aware of that. And we do the best job we can for them in minimizing taxes. But taxes are an important part of our retirement plan that a lot of people overlook. It's so important because we're not out making a lot of money right now. We're living off of the money that we saved. And so we want to make sure that we're as frugal with that as we can be. Well, that's going to be an important part during our working years. While we've got the paycheck, Mm -hmm. we try to grow that account value as much as possible and asset allocation, diversification, Uh, investment management and growth is the key. But in retirement, it's not what we've made. It's what we actually get to keep. So tax management (laughs) becomes the key. And it it sort of flips real quickly there as we as we change from making contributions to making withdrawals and distributions. Now we've got to worry about that tax man in, in between there. One of the reasons why John number seven on the list here sorry, number eight on the list here, consolidate like qualified accounts. It may be easier to map out when and how to access certain accounts if we've done a little house cleaning and and really does not work against diversification, but consolidated some of our like qualified accounts so we know what the tax implications are going to be. Well, that's true, Peter, but it also affects our our portfolio risk because a lot of times we're over-invested in different things because we've invested several accounts in the same portfolio or the same stock market stocks. And so what we want to do is consolidate. It's also a cost saving because normally you have lower expenses. If we consolidate all those accounts, we get a better picture of where you are. And if you want to make some tax decisions, then it's easy for us to look at those accounts and and in a consolidated basis and do some tax planning. Triple whammy Um, in the right direction. Risks, yeah, I mean, fees, it really is. taxes. Fees. Yeah, I mean, it really is. It's just a win-win for people. I'm amazed because a lot of people have all these different 401ks that they're small because they worked at several different companies, but they, they're they there somewhere, but they don't know what, what they're doing. And then you ask them, well, where's the statement? Well, I have to go get it. And so we end up going online, getting it offline, but they have no idea what they're invested in. And so we can give them a total approach and give them a much better picture of where they are. Well, once that has happened and we're looking at creating that retirement income, another big factor that we need to consider, unfortunately, we don't really remember to address it until it's a problem, but it's constantly a problem. Inflation. And we're seeing it right now, John, but number nine, consider inflation. I strongly urge you to do that, ladies and gentlemen. It's number nine on this list of the 10 steps uh, because things get more expensive over time. 
Well, that's right, Peter. And, as you, and while we're working and we're making money, we really don't realize the effect that inflation has on our portfolio. But but inflation historically is over 3.8%. And so people, we, a lot of plans will put 2% in there for inflation or 1%. Inflation's more than that. And as we've seen in the, this past year, inflation's been up to almost 5.5% in some cases this year. So we need to take that into consideration. It's going to be a big part in being able to have the same dollars tomorrow that we're spending today. Well, this list again, 10 steps to prepare for retirement. It's important for you to address each and every one of them on the list. If you would like this list to go over on your own time, or if you would like to enlist the help of a team of experienced, qualified professionals, pick up the phone, give a call. Uh, John and his team can send you out the list or can go through the financial focus strategy session with you, creating that written retirement income plan, addressing all 10 of these items. 386-755-9018, 386 9018. Finally on the list, John, review and update your legal documents around the time that you're entering into transitioning to retirement. A fantastic time to either get those in place or even if you've already had them in place. Life does change and, and it's time to review or update them. Well, that's right. And we don't have to probably in most cases, we don't have to worry about the little kids being taken care of because they're already grown and have kids of their own. Yep. So those wills do need to be updated. And you'll be surprised at the number of people that come in and the documents are 20, 25 years old. Things have changed, but also laws change. And so we want to make sure that we've got them current based on the current laws. But also we want to make sure that we have them, Peter. And that's another thing that people procrastinate doing those legal documents uh, because of they think they're going to cost a lot of money with an attorney. And that's really not the case. They do cost money, but it's not a, an exorbitant amount. Usually in less than $500 we can get the documents that you need. Uh, oftentimes a very minimal cost when compared mm -hmm. to the cost of not having the documents in place. Uh, both, yeah, I both, mean, both monetarily and mentally and emotionally, uh, there's a, a big cost. And I've, I've recently been through it, lived through it myself. Uh, not having those documents can cause a lot of, of heartache for, for trying to take care of matters or take care of family mm -hmm. members. Well, that's right, Peter. And if, you know, if anybody out there listening uh, would like to have the horror stories, tell them to call me. I'll be glad to give them the, uh, the rundown on all the things that have happened. Brothers fighting over jelly jars. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. But, you know, it's a big thing. And we want to make sure we always say that when we leave this earth, we want to leave it as easy a manner as we can for the kids and the family surviving members. And if we don't have these documents, then you're not doing that. You're putting a big burden on them. Plus, in some cases, you're also creating a huge legal expense trying to get the, the estate settled. It was a stained glass window from a previous marriage in, in my <laughs> recent circumstance. So yeah, uh, I, I get it. Um, <laughs> Get your affairs in order and what they mean by that, review, update those legal documents as well as the rest of the nine items on this 10 steps to prepare for retirement. So if you'd like the list again, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to sit down and go through the list and address each item with John and his team, pick up the phone, give a call 386-755-9018, 386-755-9018. John, we always appreciate your time here on the program. Always great down to earth guidance with our money with what we need to be doing with our money to address the risks and the questions and the concerns that we have. We appreciate your perspective very much. Thank you, Peter. It's great to be here. Y'all have a good week. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, and tune in for more financial focus by visiting gulfcoastfinancial.net. The information presented on this program is provided for informational purposes only, without warranty of accuracy, completeness, or suitability for a particular purpose. This program is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, legal, or tax advice. This information is general in nature and not specific enough to be construed as advice. You should not make any decision based on the information presented on this program without independent consultation with an appropriately licensed professional or competent advisor. Investment in securities or the market involves a potential risk for loss of principal. Trading, therefore, may not be suitable for all listeners. Annuity guarantees are based only on the financial strength and 
claims paying ability of the issuing company. Withdrawals of growth from annuities may be taxable as ordinary income in the year it is taken. Individuals should review contracts for specific details of the product's features and costs. Early withdrawals may subject the owner to penalties, fees, or taxes. John Kirkendall is registered with and securities are offered through Kovac Securities, Inc., member FINRA SIPC, found online at www.kovacsecurities.com. Advisory services are offered through Gulf Coast Financial Services, Inc., a registered investment advisor in Florida. Gulf Coast Financial Services, Inc. is not affiliated with Kovac Securities, Inc. or Kovac Advisors, Inc. Past performance is not indicative of future results. All investing involves risk. Investment decisions should be based on your own goals, time horizon, and tolerance for risk. Due to various factors, including changing market conditions and or applicable laws, the content may no longer be reflective of current opinions or positions.